What's up everybody and welcome to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the all new 2025 Chevrolet Equinox. This one is the RS front wheel drive, finished off in sterling gray metallic. MSRP is $37,000. Let's take a look at what the all new Equinox is gonna have to offer. We can pop that lever and we can take a look at underneath the hood. You're gonna get their Ecotec 1.5 liter. It's a turbocharged motor with 175 horsepower and 203 pound-feet of torque. This has a CVT transmission, a front-wheel drive. Taking a look at the styling, it has a pretty cool look to it, especially when you play with any of the buttons. You got those DRLs up above along with the turn signals, and then the headlight is actually down here. Very common trend in a lot of new cars, but it looks pretty cool. Got a little LED fog light here as well. Really sharp contours throughout the front end. RS badge, nice design for the mesh. Chevy bow tie along with a forward facing camera. We do have some openings down below with the intercooler back there, some silver trim as well as a gloss black, just a little bit of plastic. So overall, it's a pretty sweet looking car and for the price point, really not all too bad. Definitely a really sharp update. At the side profile, you got a nice set of two tone wheels, 19 inch diameter, and I love the split spoke. Got a little bit of that plastic fading into these fender arches just to give this a little bit more of a rugged design. And I like how this body line kind of cuts forward. It has a really sharp and aggressive style. Sharp body line through the side profile, cutting through the handles. Equinox is even blacked out, more of that plastic. Then you can see the black on the mirror caps, integrated camera. And then we have all black surrounding the windows. The roof kind of appears like it's floating in the back. I like how this glass piece is designed. You got the roof rails, panoramic sunroof up on top. And then the side profile, very proportional. This is kind of a mid-size crossover, so smaller than the Traverse, but bigger than a Trax or Trailblazer. So definitely a nice setup overall. Tail lights in back look pretty good with the LED design, really sharp and aggressive, blacked out badging, and then you have your RS badge as well. We got more of the plastic and then a lot of gloss black throughout the center with all your parking sensors, more sharp body lines to finish it up. Can't find a bad angle. I think it's a really good looking car. Underneath the badge, we can press the button and you're gonna get the power lift gate. You can operate it using the key fob or the button on the interior as well. And then back here, you got a pretty good amount of space. So definitely a nice flat load floor as well. Popping this open and we do have some hidden storage all underneath. Now if your arms are long enough, you can grab these and even push these seats forward. Get them nice and flat just to maximize the cargo space. Definitely very roomy in here. We have a handle and a button as well. And we can automatically close the lift gate. Taking a look at all that space from in here, seats fold down nice and flat. Pretty good room into that trunk. All manual controls, but really easy to operate. This can seat five people, and I love with the RS, you got the sweet interior with the red fabric, blue and red stitching, perforated leather in the centers, and then smooth leather on all the sides. In the center, we can pop this down. You got an armrest and cup holders. There's even climate vents, plugs, a little bit of storage, and then storage behind all these seats. Door panel has this cool vinyl material with some padding and contrast stitching. And then taking a look at the interior, at five foot 11 sitting behind my driver's seat, I fit really nicely. This is pretty roomy, good recline on the seats, very padded and large bases, plenty of headroom. And with a panoramic roof, of course, you have so much light let in, large windows too. So if you're gonna buy this for the family, honestly, not bad at all, even for grownups in the back. Moving to the front seat, the door panels finished off just like we saw in back with the cool vinyl, the stitching, a little bit of gloss trim with your handle, all the controls. Driver's seat is gonna be power operated, and then we have all the same cool materials and color contrast throughout these seats. Really sporty looking, RS up on the headrest, and then a nice three spoke steering wheel, almost a flat bottom with some red accents to it, and I love the red on the air vents. That is something you wouldn't expect. Now inside, got a cool graphic, and we can fire it up get some AC going. But you got all the nice designs on the steering wheel, cruise control on the left side, Bluetooth and audio on the right, along with heated steering wheel. And then the gauge cluster, got a nice tack and speedometer in the center, some information on the left. And then tapping this icon, you can see a full screen map by Google. Continuing, we have some more information like cruise in the center, and then a very simple screen, and then back to our normal screen. So nice setup overall. You do have some steering wheel mounted paddle shifters, Stock on the right is for the gear select. So you pull it back and down, going into drive, back and up, into reverse, P button is on the edge. 
stock on the left for all the windshield wipers and turn signal. And then we have auto hold, start stop, interior lighting, more of this cool vinyl, a nice air vent. And then I like how all the gauges and everything are kind of together in a bezel. You got more of this cool vinyl material with all the red accents on the air vent and trim, kind of fades into black. Red stitching down below. And then taking a look at the center screen, basically what you're used to on any Chevrolet vehicle. So Android Auto, Apple CarPlay will pop up. You have all sorts of different apps. More controls that you can adjust and configure. Radio information will all come up as well. Full screen navigation, phone, and then settings is up above. Taking another close look at the camera system, you got that forward view top down. You can scroll left and right and see all sorts of different ones. You have the other view as well. You can do a top down, front and back, wheels. So definitely a pretty sweet camera system for the car. Nice, good graphics. We have air vents down below, heated seats, dual zone temperature as well. All the different controls very simply laid out. And I do like how on the screen, you can actually pop it up and have it right here as well. So you get a good depiction or just having physical buttons down below, which a lot of people like. We have some plugs down below with extra storage, wireless phone charging and couplers and more storage. Now this has a drive mode select. This one only has two modes. So kind of overkill with the graphics and this nice dial for just a slippery mode basically and normal. But I would assume the all wheel drive one probably has a lot more modes. From here, we have some storage down below, extra storage down here. And I like this vinyl with the red and blue stitching. You have a nice cubby over here. And then one last look at the interior. The 2025 Equinox, really nice step up. This is a really cool interior without breaking the bank. So I like it quite a lot. Nice sunroof up there with the massive panoramic. Of course you have a sunglass holder, all the glass buttons. And then for the rear view mirror, you even have the integrated camera, or of course you can go back and forth. Garage door buttons as well. And then we have a pretty good size sun visor with your mirror. All right, so setting off now in the Blazer. So first thing you're gonna notice, being front wheel drive, there is a lot of torque steer and a lot of feedback through the steering wheel. So when you're just cruising, it's very light, super easy, but if you give it some gas, you kinda gotta fight the steering wheel just a little bit. Same with slow speeds, I've been able to squeal the tires quite a lot without even trying. So I would go all wheel drive, honestly, there's a lot of input, I'm just not the biggest fan of that. Normal driving though, it's pretty comfortable overall. The suspension is absorbing the bumps really well. I mean, it's a pretty smooth to drive car, really good visibility over all the glass, right and left shoulder. I mean, it's pretty roomy in here. Definitely nothing to complain about. I love the camera for that rear view mirror. That really goes a long way. But as we get up and go right here, like I'm really fighting the steering wheel to not jerk. So all that movement is the car doing that. So that is definitely one thing. I feel like the drivetrain is a little rough with the CVT and the turbo engine. I'm not a fan of just that part. No other normal things. This is comfortable. The seats are really padded, especially with the driver's seat being power operated. I can get it in a really good position and a good armrest and everything. So I'd say overall, it seems like a nice to drive car. It's very comfortable to be in. There's a lot of room. I like the tech. It looks really good and it works really nice. Of course, having like that full screen nav right in the center, kind of cool to have both of them going if you're going on some crazy trip. But I think I like how they've done the overall technology in this car to where it's easy to use and familiar. It looks a lot like General Motors in general. So it's nothing hard to get used to, it has all the technology you're going to want and expect. And then storage is all really good. Physical climate controls are great. I just say as a driving experience, I wouldn't say it's anything that's gonna really blow your socks off. It kind of drives like a typical crossover, I would say, uh, just a lot of input. Now, as far as the power though, it still gets up to speed pretty well. I wouldn't say it's exactly a sluggish car, but when we pull back into traffic, there is some lag right now. Like I'm kind of flooring it a little bit and it takes a while to get up and move. But once you're going, it kind of carries its weight really well. So it's fine for the driving experience. Just, I would say a little on the unrefined side, basically just the drivetrain area. The ride quality, I don't really have an issue with. It seems pretty quiet overall and comfortable. Uh, good seating position, you're up high, so it doesn't feel like just a tiny little car. So pretty good overall, I would say, as a driving experience. Uh, you do have the practicality, it's not too crazy expensive, so not bad overall. Yeah.